So we're here in the train shed again to fit a sound decoder into this Clayton diesel, a branch line engine slash shunter, which we made a video of. Link up there or there. Yes, we went to see a real Clayton, the only surviving real Clayton on which C railway? C and PR, Chino and Prince's Frisbee Railway. We had a lovely day there and we liked it so much that we went and got one of the Helljan models of the class 17. And what's some reviews? Um, lots of people have said ne quite negative things about this model. Um, we picked this up second hand and it was listed as a slow runner uh, and it was an incredibly slow runner but I, I was able to get the bogies apart and lubricate the gear chain inside and now it runs much much better. Today we'll be fitting it with a sound decoder. Simon you hold it up to the camera. There's another Zemo sound decoder fitted with you choose sound now we've watched a few reviews of this particularly about how difficult it is to take apart so we were aware that this might be a little bit challenging um so bear with us as we try to take this beastie apart welcome back to workbench wednesdays Okay, here we go with the loco in the loco servicing cradle. Thank mm -hmm. you, Sam, for getting that out. So to get this guy apart, you've got to remove, first of all, the buffer rings. There are little rings that are back on the back that hold these sprung buffers in place. You've got to very carefully tease those out. And then there are four clips. One, two, three, four, to prise out. And then I think the whole chassis comes out of the body. At least that's what it looked like on the other videos we've watched. So um, we're gonna have a go at doing that now and hopefully do it without losing the buffer rings or um, causing any damage. Let's see. I just haven't got the, oh, I dropped it. So that did just pull off, but now I've dropped the buffer ring. <laughs> so I, I can get it with these tweezers here. Actually, I probably should get a slightly smaller pair of tweezers out. Tweezers. Tweezers. I'm just gonna grip it, grip the buffer ring with these. I feel like maybe getting these back together is gonna be the more tricky part because actually getting the buffer rings off is pretty easy so far. Four. So now let's have a look at these clips. One, two, three, four. That was better than last time. Oh, that was much easier than the last time. I'm not there yet. Ah, yes, there's wires between the body and the chassis. chassis to be really careful of. That's the lighting at each end. I do have to say, Sam's trains, that was a lot easier than I was anticipating it would be. Um, in fact, it really wasn't all that difficult at all. But perhaps I would have found it much more difficult if I hadn't watched your video first. So thank you, Sam's trains. We do love your content. Um, keep making it. So the cab here is also very easy to remove. That's a separate part. I'm just gonna take it off for for ease of laying it all flat on the bench, really. I said it's easy, this is actually, there we go. Well, the other part was quite easy. It was quite easy, there we go. That just slides off like that. And I do wonder if perhaps the original intention of this design was that this part here would come out with the cab, giving you really easy access to that decoder socket without having to take the whole thing apart. That would have been great, um, but perhaps then the chassis this the frames here wouldn't have had enough strength to hold it all together which is why that's fixed that's the socket so it's just this this green part on top that needs to come off there there we go that's the good. prizing tool is the right way to go there's our decoder and socket I'll put it in the little tub. do put the decoder piece the blanking plate in there right now for the easy so part it's going to be tight this now this part here i think is is recessed so that you can fit the decoder plug on the top of it uh nor which way therefore which way around it goes get your diagram let's try it like that now, i know which is pin one on the plug i don't know which is pin one on the socket now this is going to be difficult to test because we can't really drive it around with the body hanging off on the wires like that but we're going to have a go anyway first mock-up is ready simon has fired up the sound has fired up the sound <laughs> oh yeah well, I'm, I'm fairly good for two, yeah, but still. Ooh. You can see the lights coming on in the chassis there. What other sounds have we got? Lots of different sounds. Okay, I'm just going to move it very carefully. Check that the motor works and moves. 
There we go, yeah, and the other way. Oh, that sound is great. What do you think, Simon? Great. Great. Let's put it all back together. I hope it's going to go fairly easily. Why do you put the speaker there? Um, no, I want the speaker at the side. I think maybe it could. No, there's not quite enough width to go there. So we've got it back on the bench. I'm just trying to work out where to fit all the bits. The decoder is going to fit quite comfortably by the side there. There's a little piece of foam that was here on either side of the body, which I've removed. Here they are. I think that's going to make space for our um, decoder. decoder on one side and speaker on the other side. Um, the stay alive capacitor is a bit trickier, but I'm thinking that might go at the end here. It's a time honored tradition that the speaker I order with the decoder is just a bit too big uh, and I've been a bit too optimistic. So I've got another one here, which is actually deeper, but it's a single speaker and I think that's gonna fit here at the front. So we're gonna swap that out and uh, then hopefully we should have a bit more we know success. It works, yes, I've taped the speakers down because if you've watched these videos before, you'll know that these are magnetic and tend to jump up at the soldering iron. So there's the double speaker removed, we'll save that. And the point of no return has already happened. I'm not sure if that really applies to these because I've not actually cut anything. I've desoldered the speaker. So you can return it? Well, I can't return it legitimately because we tested it and it worked when we first got it. So if it stops working immediately now, it's probably because I've done something wrong. But that's why we always test it before we do anything to it stick it in place okay yes so you're quite right simon having swapped the speaker we should test it before we put it all back together so let's do that next simon fire up the sound for test two oh yes so the replacement speaker works a treat <gasps> red lights at the back good white lights at the front okay good right shut it down again simon and i'll put it all back together sound off Lovely. Just before we put it back together, I'll show you I've got the speaker now fitted here with a piece of black tack, stay alive capacitor at the other end, and the decoder hanging out the side, which I'm going to poke through here and fix in place once the body is back on. So that's the next job. Put it back together, we'll test it, we'll reprogram it, assuming it works, and then running session galore. Oh, I think I need to go over the top like that. Why are the two, three, and four on this not working? There's nothing connected to them, is why. But what does this switch on the back to? Oh, I don't know. I hadn't noticed that switch. Got it in. It's back together. It's got a stay alive capacitor in one end. It's got a speaker at the other end. And now it's going to have this chip fitted on the side. Just wanted to show this going on really nicely. I've actually taken the black tack out because that was adding a bit of extra depth, which was stopping the cab fitting on. And it's held quite snugly by the cab uh, surround there. And this just slides over. Nicely. And clips back into place. And then we've got, we have it. We've got the decoder you inside. The buffers for the hammer? No necessary smashing is required. It will clip back in. I had it just now and unclips it again. Mm, it's looking a bit out a bit here now. But mm. With a bit of a persuasion that will go back in. And uh, there it is. We've just got to put the buffers back on and then it's all done. Simon has very pessimistically said, we're not going to be able to do this. This is the reattaching of the buffers. So I've got the little buffer ring held in tweezers there and I'm going to hold it behind the buffer socket, push the buffer through, and then push, yeah, this is what I thought might be the case. Okay, Simon, can you drive the uh, loco into shop, please? Got it all back together. It was very fiddly reattaching those buffers, but Ooh, we did. There it is. We did get them in. Ooh, nice. Right, stop it just there. Wow, it's working. It is working, right. Could you do the honours, Simon, and fire up the sound? Oh, lovely. Yes. What a beauty. We knew it worked in the first place. But that was before the we put the body back in. So, and listen to this. American horn. In real life, American horns 
were very long and very loud. And then... Okay, it's on the programming track and Simon is going to reprogram it to 8568. Eight. Loco, direct, address, address right and then you need to click it again and then you've got 003 and then you type in the number you want which in this case is 8568. Eight. Do you type that in? Then you actually double check it's right. So now I'm just checking it's right before I actually program it. 8568, 8568. Great. And then you click this same button again, and then it, the red light flashes and it clicks. Don't know why it clicks. And that should be it done, should and it? And then it has selected our number for us, so we'll, we'll put it back on my running track. Well done, very carefully done, Simon. Good boy. Okay. And let's fire it up again and check that that's worked. Excellent. Now it responds Let's to... Let's go and collect a... the carousing coaches I chose. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll have to do a running session now, shall we? Here's the list of different sounds. It comes equipped with... Lots to choose from there, which is great. Now we're going to have a running session and we're going to run it down to the traverser and Simon's put a couple of clarestory coaches in there for it to pick up. <laughs> Going a bit mad with the sounds there, Simon. I think we've got an infinite horn on. Want to switch that off? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Run it over the viaduct. You might have spotted that our viaduct is lacking hillside at the moment. We're rebuilding this module. So we'll feature that in the new video. Yeah, that'll be in the next video, but it's taking us a little while, so it'll be a couple of weeks before we can see that one, I think. So you'll have to wait and see when that comes out. Exactly right, yes. Run it a bit faster. Lovely, there it goes. Keep it going till it's clear of the points. A little bit further. Dragging. Have you put it in shunt mode? No, it's just, just going slowly. Okay. I am going to okay. And it's clear. You're going to change them. Okay. Yeah, we should line that up. Let's pull the traverser out. There we go. Those are We're heading it for the clerestory coaches. Right, let's line that up carefully. And check that alignment with your finger. Is that nicely lined up? Oops. Yeah? That good? That's good. Okay. Right, let's send the Clayton down to pick up some coaches. Um, the head coach on this side is correct. Oh, okay. Well, for where we are. It's obviously a tunnel. It's about to go into the tunnel, which isn't actually a tunnel. It will be a tunnel release. It will be a tunnel, yeah, it's not a tunnel yet. So that'll all be off stage when the model is finished. That'll be inside the tunnel. And it comes out down under here. It oh, I can see the light. Out here it comes. So that head code panel is wrong for where we live. Do it nice and carefully across, across the join into the traverser. And it goes. And then. You can't see very well behind the uh, terrestries there, but it's just coupling up. Well, Sorry, behind the Pullmans. Behind the Pullmans, I mean. Hope, shall I just check if that's coupled? Don't drive it for a moment. It has coupled. Good. Okay, let's just 
Check that alignment again. Check it for me. Does that look good? No, it does. Yeah, well done. Thank you. And we can run it out, back out again. Now that looks cool is correct. That's actual cat. Right in there now, you can see right up there. There it is. Stunning, actually. Well, actually, really, really slowly. Yeah, you're going to think that a bit. That's what I've been thinking about, like, see, the sound effects are all over. Until I stop talking. Good guess. What lovely sounds. This one just didn't get on because they didn't have time. Good horse. Well, I quite enjoyed installing the sound decoder in the uh, Clayton. I was anticipating it being one of the more difficult installations I've done, um, having seen lots of videos about how difficult it is to take apart and put back together again. Um, yeah, it was a bit tricky, um, but probably not as tricky as I was expecting. Getting the buffers back on was the trickiest part. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with the end result and how it looks and how it sounds. I've got the sound switched off now, but horn's still on. Um, so yeah, it's a model that we're very happy with, even more so now that it makes brilliant noises. What do you think, Simon? Um, great. 
American. Does it get much better than that? No, it doesn't get much better than that. Ever.